right, if we're going to find the average value of the function, let's let our function here be f of x equal to x cubed plus 4x. And we'll work on the interval negative 1 to 2. So the basics of finding the average value. To find the average value of this function, we go back to basically our average value definition over here. We start by taking 1 and putting that over b minus a. So 1 over b minus a. Well, a and b, again, those are the values we're working with on our intervals. So a is negative 1, b is 2. If you take b minus a, it's 2 minus the negative 1. Get one third back. Continuing working off the definition here. We've got our definite integral that we're going to set up with respect to this function. Interval is going to be a to b. So we set up the definite integral, a, negative 1, b, 2. Apply it to the original function, x cubed plus 4x, working with respect to x. So how we go from here? A few ways we could do it. But one way is we could just go through and evaluate this definite integral like we normally do. To do that, this one's set up pretty nice for us. We've got individual terms to work with. So you take the antiderivative of your individual terms. You would have a 1 fourth x to the fourth, right, for the x cubed term. Plus, and let's see, power here is going to be 2 on the 4x term. Reciprocal of 1 half gets multiplied to the 4 in front, making that a 2 right there. That would be the antiderivative of the function. All the meanwhile, we are multiplying by one third, and we still have to acknowledge the interval. So we throw the little bar in here, got our interval values at the end. This all equals the average value of the function. So what I might do first before I start substituting values, or if I want to get crazy about this, I could do this all at once. You know, first I might distribute that one third through. Um, as you're distributing that one-third through where the craziness could ensue, we could plug in these values at the same time, right? So if I take the one-third, I multiply through to the one-fourth, we've got one-twelfth, it'd be x to the fourth. If I replace x using the first fundamental theorem with two, it'd be two to the fourth. Plus, distribute the one-third through to that two, get two-thirds. Again, I'm substituting for x right now with the 2, and that's squared. So that makes up the first part here as I apply the first fundamental theorem. Now subtract, got to substitute the negative 1 in. So it'd be 1 12th, negative 1 to the fourth, plus 2 thirds, negative 1 to the second. And basically, I do that calculation. That gives me the average value of the function. Which let me see if I've already done that. Of course, I have not done that. So let's do that now. All right, so winning answer is 3.25. So yeah, we're trying to find a number here where if we plug it into the function, we would get the average value of the function back. We'll let our function on this one be f of x equals 5x plus x squared. Interval this time we'll work on is 0 to 4. So start with the average value. The average value going to equal 1 over b minus a. So a is 0, b is 4 based on our interval here. It's b minus a would be 1 fourth times the definite integral based on that same interval 0 to 4. Apply to the original function 5x plus x the second with respect to x. 
So if we're consistent here with uh, what we did from before, we'll take care of the definite integral part. Go ahead and take the antiderivative of these individual terms. Uh, doing that with the 5x, we would have, what, 5 halves x to the second. For the x squared, it would be 1 third x cubed. All along understanding that we got to multiply this 1 fourth through still and acknowledge the interval. like we did before. Let's distribute our value at the same time we're uh, plugging these interval values in. We distribute the 1 fourth through the 5 halves, we get 5 eighths. Replacing x with 4 would be 4 squared. Plus, multiply 1 fourth to 1 third, get 1 twelfth. Replace x with 4 here, 4 cubed. That takes care of the first substitution of interval values. Subtract. Okay, well, if I subtract here, understanding that I'm plugging in zero, right, and I've got a bunch of x terms, everything's going to cancel out. So we'll just subtract zero. Now, I believe I have this one calculated. I came up with 46 thirds. So our average value of this function is 46 thirds. And if we were doing what we did before, we'd be finished. But this one's asking for a little bit more. We've got to find this value of c such that the average value of the function is equal to f of c. So let's carry that over to the next page. If I line this all up, we'll let the left side of this equation we're setting up to solve for C, B, that average value we just found. So that average value we just found was 46 thirds. So that's going to equal F of C. So basically take your original function, replace all the X's with C. That would give us 5C plus C squared. Again, you're plugging into the original function. At this point, if you're solving for C, um, I'd suggest clearing that fraction out. Multiply everything by 3. Doing that, I've got 46 equals 15c plus 3c squared. Got a quadratic that's forming here, so let's shift everything to one side, set this equal to 0, rearrange some terms. I'd have 3c squared plus 15c minus 46. You could attempt to factor that, but I don't think you would have much success. So we would turn to the quadratic formula. In this case, c would equal negative 15 plus or minus square root of 15 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, and c, which is negative 46, all over 2 times 3. Go through that calculation. And let's see, if we do that, we get negative 15 plus or minus. All right, when I did this earlier, the square root of our discriminant here came out to be, rounding off to one decimal place, 27.9. Yeah, this was definitely not factorable. All over 6. At which point, if we're solving for C, we take the negative 15, we add the 27.9, we divide all that by 6. I got 2.15 when I did that. And then we take the negative 15, subtract the 27.9, divide that by 6. If I can read my writing here, I believe that's negative 7.15. Okay. Now, trying to figure out what c is here, so if we plug back into the function, we get the average value of the function, but we are working on a 
particular interval, right? The interval's from zero to four. So we have to go with the value that we come up with that is on that interval. That would take the negative value out, meaning C has to be 